So let's dive into the process of cellular respiration. Now there's a lot going on in this process. There are uh, sort of three and a half major steps. Um, I'll that second step pyruvate oxidation is just a little one so I call it three and a half um, but anyway um, the process of cellular respiration is the conversion of glucose um, into uh, a uh, well essentially into carbon dioxide which has very little energy um, and when it is converted into carbon dioxide um, the energy is released electrons are transferred to oxygen and ATP is produced so that's sort of the overview of what is ultimately happening um, this whole process is very overwhelming to students there's a lot of chemistry there are a lot of molecules there are a lot of things going in and going out so I will tell you right now that you have to do some memorizing in this chapter. You don't have to have a lot memorized by our um, quiz in class, but you do have to have it memorized for the exam. If you don't have it, I suggest that you pause and go get the cellular respiration summary sheet that is part of your study guide and use that as we go through these video, this video um, and the next video as well to keep track of what's going in and what's going out. I do expect that you know the molecules and the quantities of everything that goes in and everything that goes out. I do not expect that you know all of the intermediate molecules with the exception of a couple and I will point those out. Um, but the reason that I ask students to memorize what goes in and what goes out is that it helps them to understand the process. When they see a molecule go in and they see the way that it comes out, it helps them to visualize what's actually going on. Um, so as much as that sucks, um, I'm going to ask you to do it. And I will expect that you have some of these things memorized for the exam. Um, as I said in the last video, you also have to have the overall formulas memorized. So if you um, have not started working on that already, you need to get started on that. So let's start. Um, we're going to start with sort of an overview of the general process of cellular respiration, and then we're going to dive into each one of these steps. So cellular respiration is the oxidation of glucose. Remember, oxidation involves loss, so the loss of electrons from glucose. Um, and those electrons are going to be moved to oxygen. This is why oxygen is required as a reactant in this overall process. So in the process of cellular respiration, um, organic molecules are oxidized. That means their electrons are removed. When this happens, they're converted into lower energy products. Um, so energy is removed as electrons are moved. We saw that NAD plus um, is the carrier that takes those electrons slowly from glucose. And those electrons and their energy are transferred to other molecules with the ultimate goal of producing ATP. Um, as this happens, those electrons sort of fall in energy. So as they are passed between molecules, they lose energy. Um, so in this transfer of electrons, we get this slow transfer of energy um, through a chain of molecules. And eventually, they fall all the way to oxygen. Um, they Remember, they are moved by electron shuttles. Uh, the main one is NADH, um, but we also have a second one called FADH2. Uh, it's a very similar molecule to NADH. Um, it also picks up electrons and moves them um, through a series of oxidation reduction reactions. And as that happens, the energy is slowly extracted from those electrons and used to produce ATP. ATP is produced by two different mechanisms in this overall process of cellular respiration. Um, I don't expect you to know all of these terms at the moment. We will come back to some of them. Um, but I do need you to know the difference between these two mechanisms. The first is oxidative phosphorylation. In oxidative phosphorylation, you get the bulk of your ATP production. 
During oxidative phosphorylation, electrons are passed through a series of molecules called an electron transport chain. Um, and as that happens, it's a series of oxidation reduction, oxidation reduction, oxidation reduction, all the way down to all of the energy is taken out, and that energy is used to produce ATP. So that's the main sort of bulk energy production during cellular respiration. The other mechanism is called substrate level phosphorylation. So if you remember that word substrate, um, that is enzyme, an, an enzyme uh, works on a substrate. So substrate level phosphorylation is when an enzyme transfers a phosphate um, to ADP to produce ATP. This happens at a lower level in cellular respiration. It happens in uh, two of our steps of cellular respiration and then also in fermentation. Substrate level phosphorylation produces a lot less ATP than oxidative phosphorylation, but together um, they produce the ATP that's used in the cell. So here's our overview again. We're going to start with the process of glycolysis. Um, that occurs outside of the mitochondrial membrane. Um, in the process of glycolysis, we get um, some electrons transferred from NADH. So we see the initial breakdown of glucose, the initial release of energy. And those electrons are ultimately going to be fed into the process of oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, we also produce electrons, uh, or we move electrons um, from the third step there, the citric acid cycle, um, into the process of oxidative phosphorylation as well. Remember, that's where most of our ATP is produced. That's the important step, and that's the ultimate goal of cellular respiration. But we also have a little bit of substrate level um, ATP production as well that occurs in glycolysis and citric acid cycle. So let's take a look at glycolysis. As I said, glycolysis occurs outside of the mitochondrial membrane. So this is occurring in the cytosol of the cell. Um, <clears throat> and the product of glycolysis is then going to move into the mitochondria. So remember, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, right? Everybody knows that. So ultimately, we need to get our molecules into that mitochondria where we're going to produce our ATP. But first, we need to start the initial breakdown of glucose. So in the process of glycolysis, um, if you look at that word glyco, meaning sugar, lysis, meaning break. So this is the initial breakdown of glucose. Um, we oxidize glucose, so we take away electrons from it. And the product of this uh, step is the production of a molecule called pyruvate. Um, Glycolysis occurs whether or not there is oxygen present. Um, so uh, pretty much anything in any environment is going to perform glycolysis. Um, it does not require the use of a mitochondria. Um, and so we see this um, in uh, bacteria and some other things that are breaking down sugars but not using oxygen. Um, on all of these slides, I try to keep track of what goes in and what goes out. Um, so in glycolysis, um, we have two major phases. One is called the energy investment phase. Um, in this phase, we begin the breakdown of glucose, but that requires a little bit of energy. So if you think about a savings account, you have to put in a little bit of money before you get a payoff, before you have to invest a little bit of money before you get a payoff. So we have to invest two ATP for each six carbon glucose molecule. Um, and when we do that, um, we transfer a phosphate um, and we produce ADP. In the second step, um, we actually, it's called the energy payoff phase because we actually produce four ATP. So even though we invested two, we produce four. So our net product of uh, glycolysis is two ATP. 
Um, but that's not really very much. Um, the actual goal of glycolysis is to produce a couple of electron carriers. So to get those electrons, some of that energy away from glucose, those are going to go to oxidative phosphorylation in our last step, um, and to start the breakdown of glucose. So we start that breakdown by essentially breaking it in half, going from a six carbon sugar to two, two carbon pyruvate molecules. Um, so we have started our breakdown, we've produced just a little bit of energy, and we've started producing those electron carriers. Those electron carriers are going to be really important in ATP production. So this is the um, crazy confusing glycolysis energy investment phase diagram. Um, really what I want you to get from this is um, the understanding that we start with that six carbon glucose, go through a series of steps that require ATP um, to sort of move around bonds and um, change the molecule. And ultimately, we get um, two molecules, um, a G3P and a DHAP. You do not need to know those. I'm just pointing those out to you. Because remember, we're breaking glucose down. And so at this point, this energy investment phase, we've bro essentially broken it in, in half. We've produced this G3P and this DHAP. Um, so electrons are moved or rearranged. Our glucose is cleaved in half. In the energy payoff phase, um, we do a little bit more rearranging, um, a little bit more movement of electrons and movement of bonds, um, and then ultimately we produce a little bit of ATP from this process. But the important thing is that we produced those electron carriers in the energy investment phase, I'm sorry, actually in this payoff phase, I misspoke there, um, we produce some electron carriers um, and we produce pyruvate. Pyruvate is important because it's going to continue on and we're going to continue to remove energy and electrons from that molecule. So after glycolysis, so we have started with glucose, we've broken it in half into two pyruvate molecules. Um, Depending on the cell, we can go one of two ways. We can either go into fermentation, and fermentation happens in organisms um, that either do not or cannot use oxygen uh, for cellular respiration. And so in those cases, the cellular respiration just does not occur. Instead, we follow this uh, process of fermentation. Um, we are going to come back to fermentation. Um, fermentation um, is actually just the partial breakdown. We only get a little bit of energy. We don't completely break down that pyruvate. For now, we're going to continue into the citric acid cycle. Um, in the citric acid cycle, we use oxygen or another electronegative atom um, to accept those electrons um, that are being uh, released during this process. Um, so cellular respiration occurs in organisms that can and do use oxygen. Um, and the next step um, will be the citric acid cycle. That citric acid cycle occurs in the mitochondria. Um, so this is where we continue our breakdown and our energy production. Um, if we're going to go down the citric acid route, um, we are either an aerobic organism, one that uses oxygen, or we can also be an anaerobic organism. This just means um, that they are not using oxygen uh, for um, the production of ATP, but another electron instead, but still using this process of citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. Um, anaerobic respiration is also used to describe fermentation. So tr I try very hard to only use anaerobic when I'm referring to the process that is the same as aerobic but with a different electron acceptor. Um, and I try to refer to fermentation as fermentation, not anaerobic. But if you watch other lecture videos or even in your textbook, um, they do also call fermentation anaerobic respiration. 
All right, so we have broken down our glucose and now we have this pyruvate molecule. Um, glycolysis imp is important because it gives us a few electron carriers. Um, it gives us a little bit of ATP, but it's really important because it begins that breakdown of glucose. This process of pyruvate oxidation in the citric acid cycle is going to continue the breakdown of glucose uh, so that we can get all of the energy possible out of that molecule. All right, so I said that cellular respiration was kind of three and a half steps. Um, I call this pyruvate oxidation step a half step because it's just a real short step, um, but it's an important one. It prepares our molecules for the final extraction of energy. So we have broken down glucose to produce pyruvate. Remember, pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. We get two of those for every glucose that goes in. Um, and in the process of pyruvate oxidation, more electrons are removed from pyruvate. And so we're slowly taking that energy away from the original glucose molecule. Um, and here we get also our first uh, carbon dioxide molecule released. Remember, carbon dioxide is a, prod a byproduct of cellular respiration. And with, that's the reason that we breathe out carbon dioxide. Uh, we also get another electron carrier that's going to be used later. So um, continuing to remove some electrons from that original glucose molecule. Um, and we produce a molecule called acetyl-CoA. So this is two molecules from that pyruvate plus a molecule called coenzyme A. And that coenzyme A is going to move into uh, the next step of cellular respiration. So in pyruvate oxidation, we have accumulated more NADH molecules, and we've also released some carbon dioxide. Remember, though, that two molecules of pyruvate came in, so we've actually released two carbon dioxides and two NADH and produced two acetyl-CoA's.